welcome to the Black Sheep Props channel. I'm Steve and I'm here to teach you the tips, tools, techniques, and materials for building your very own super cool EVA foam props. Now in our last build we went video game when we built the laser pistol from Fallout. And if you missed that build we're going to include the link in the description below to our channel's homepage so you can go over there and check out laser pistol or any of the other cool builds we have there. But for this build, we're going to go action movie. So, without further ado, Black Sheep Props would like to introduce you to the newest member of the family. <laughs> That's right, dig it, man. It is Blondie's Axe from the action movie Sucker Punch. That's right. Check it out. Super easy and super cool. It's got the dark handle. It's almost black, but you can kind of pick up some wood tones through it. It's got the worn out leather grip. It's got the leather strap tied around the head, and it's got the black steel head to the axe that's a little bit oxidized, and it's got some wear marks on it. Um, really fun and really easy. So in this episode, making an EVA foam sucker punch blondie axe, we're going to go step by step through how to make it. Not only are we going to make it, we're going to seal it and we're going to paint it all in this one episode. And uh, if you want to build along with us, um, we've got a template for this thing. So we're going to include the link in the description below to our storefront. So you can go over there and grab a template if you want. Or don't, just hang out, chill, that's cool too. Um, Alright, that's it. Enough of me flopping my gums. If you're ready to hit it, let's make something. Alright, check that out, man, that's it. That's all. Oh, uh, we've got two 12 millimeter pieces here and a big three millimeter. We're gonna use this for the body. We've got this 12 millimeter and three millimeter also for the top part that's gonna sit on top of the head of the ax right here. There's a 36 millimeter piece, that's an inch and a half. We're gonna All right, there we go. Now you know the drill with contact cement. You coat both sides, you wait till it dries, and then it makes contact. Time to shape our handle. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come in with this wood dowel. All right, now this is going to be our support. So it's going to go all the way through our handle. We don't want to go all the way to the end, so we'll stop right about there. All right here's where the end of the handle is going to go, right there. And now we're going to have it go up into the head a little bit. So let's see. I'd say an inch and a quarter is safe. This is going to be a super light prop, so it's not really going to need a ton of support. So there we go. There's our two lines right there. There we go. That's going to be our trench right there. All right, here we go. We've got our round bit in here. There we go. We're going to peel off this residue right here. That bit gets so hot, it melts. Melts the plastic. So we got to pull off this little crispy edge right here all the way down. So we're going to do the same thing here. All right, there we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to knock that edge off. Like that. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to cut just outside this line. Now this doesn't have to be coated too much because it's going to be submerged in there. But it, there we go. There's our support. Now. We have to be careful. We have to line up this edge flush where we cut it off straight and line up our trench. There we go, we're down. Now we gotta come over to this side and we gotta eyeball this thing all the way down to make sure we get in the trench. All right, all right. So now we can come back in with our pattern. Now we know when we cut this out, we're not going to hit our wood dowel. All right, so we're going to go over to the bandsaw and we're going to knock this out.
All right, now what we're going to do is this. We did that on this side. Now we're gonna roll it over and we're gonna transfer this pattern back over to this side to do right there and down here on the end. We've got the taper here and it flares back out and then we rolled it over to that side and did the same thing. So now our handle is roughly shaped out with this cool little curve right here. Nice. All right, now we're gonna come back in with the Dremel and we're gonna round this thing off, all right? Now, dust mask. All right, we're gonna come in with our super rough bit, all right, because we're gonna tear off the corners. Then after that, we'll come in with the smooth bit and smooth it out. Now we come back in with our smooth bit to clean it up. All right, there we go. We are shaping up pretty nice and it's stiff because it's got a wood dowel in the middle of it. That's pretty sweet. All right. All right, now we're gonna come in with our 220 sanding stick. Let's see if we can smooth this out. Oh, that's looking nice. Wow. One more time with the 320. Let's see if we can get it even smoother. All right, that is not too shabby. All right, let's seal it. All right, a lot of work, but not hard. Look at that, perfect. All right, All right man, we're in good shape with this. All right, now we're gonna come in with these two pieces here. We've got our 36 millimeter head to our axe and we've got these two pieces the 12 and the 3 let's go ahead and attach those together all right there we go now we're going to do a side cut all right so we're going to come in here take our side cut pattern Just like that. All right, there we go. Now we've got an angled front. Okay, here's our 36 millimeter blade. Now we're gonna use a drill bit. We're gonna poke a hole through the heart right there so that we've got a hole to feed our scroll saw blade through to cut the heart out. All right, now we're gonna go through with a wider bit just to make the hole a little wider. All right, there we go. Perfect hole, let's go feed the scroll saw blade through there and cut it out. All right, there we go. Nice. All right, All right we're gonna make some marks. All right, there's the center. And there's the center at the front. All right, there's our center line. Now we're gonna come from this corner to that center line, like that. All right, now that's the cut we have to make right there. Now we're gonna go over to the bandsaw and we're gonna knock these two cuts out. Okay, now we're gonna have to do these two taper cuts, but this blade is a hair too high to go through our bandsaw. So we're gonna take the table off the bandsaw so that gives us a tiny little bit more room and we'll go through and cut this out. All right, that was tough but we sort of worked it out. We're gonna have to shape it a little bit with the Dremel. All right, let's get our 
rough Dremel bit out. Let's do a little bit of shape in here. Now we're going to come in with our smooth bit. Alright, let's come in with our little 220 sanding stick. We just took a popsicle stick. This is one of the sticks we use when we stir up our glue. And we put some sandpaper on the other side of it with double stick tape. So we're going to come in with this 220. Actually, let's come in with the 80, which is a little bit rougher. There we go. We're getting all these bandsaw lines off of here. Because those are bothering the heck out of me. Alright, now we're going to come back in with the 220 to smooth it out. Beautiful, that is really sweet, really sweet. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and we're gonna heat seal it. We don't wanna go too crazy right here though because it's thin, all right? We wanna kiss it just to tighten it up. Like that. Now we can stay longer down here where it's thicker. But up here, just a little bit like that. All right? Just Go across it real quick like that. Alright, so what we just did is we tightened it up and we just heated this up a little bit because we want to lay the blade flat. And we're going to let it cool a little bit. So that's going to help us have a really flat edge to our blade. All right, there we go, nice and straight. Look at that, man, that's a sweet blade with the heart in there. Cool. All right, All right now we're gonna drill a skinny pilot hole. All right. All right, we need to go right to about there on the base. All right, we made a Sharpie mark, so we'll see that while we're drilling. Now let's put a slightly wider bit in. Now we want the bit to be a little bit smaller than our dowel so that the fit is snug. All right, let's do the same thing. Let's make our Sharpie mark right to there. Oh yeah, it's gonna be nice and snug. All right, let's get some cement on both of these pieces. Alright, here we go. Now, before we slide this in, we're gonna... okay, so we're putting wet cement into the cavity. And we're spinning this around so that we're coating the inside of the cavity. Alright, there we go. Alright, there we go. The dry cement made contact with the dry cement and inside the cavity the cement in there that's wet, eventually the moisture content will evaporate inside the cement and the two will stick together, the wood dowel and the inner walls. So it's extra support. All right, look at that, man, that thing's jamming. Nice. All right, now we're gonna take this piece and we're gonna stick it on here just like that. But what we're going to do is we're going to slightly round off some of the edges, all right? So let's... slightly rounded off on the back there. Now let's come in with our smooth bit and let's get that thing cleaned up a little bit. All right, our little 220. All right, there we go. Stick one side down and then come around to this side. Make sure we're 
right and we are there we go all right look at that cool we got the rounded back here these two rounded corners on the the head of the axe and then we match those round corners right here okay here's a two millimeter piece of foam all right we're going to use super glue put a little bit on our piece just to get it started And we're going to hold it while it bonds. Just like that. It's going to have that kind of a look to it. Now we're just going to keep going. All right, there we go, looking good. Now we're going to come to the end and we're going to cut this long angled cutoff. Okay, our angle is not actually right. It's probably gonna... Okay, that should work. That is pretty good. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off a little bit shorter, right there. Curve it, just like that. All right, that should work. Just like that. Now we can put a little super glue there. That's sweet. All right. Okay, we've got another long two millimeter piece of foam. Now let's... All right, there we go. Now we're gonna get it started down here, right in the center underneath. Okay, now if we take this piece and we knot it, which is... All right, there we go. We've got a cool knot. We're going to cut it. All right. All right, there we go. Love it. That is jamming. Look at that. All right, so with that last detail, putting the fake knot on the end, that brings the build portion of Blondie's axe to a close. All right, here we are at the spray stand. We're gonna begin coating our ax with our Plasti Dip. And you know what we always say, even if you're outside in a well-ventilated area, do not spray without your respirator. There we go. Coated it with several coats of our Plasti Dip. Look at nice. Let it dry, then we'll paint it. All right, now we're gonna come in and we're gonna start doing the leather stuff that's wrapped around the head of our ax here. We're gonna start with our brown. All right, now don't worry about getting it on these other parts because we're gonna paint that afterwards. That's it. We got one layer of brown down. Now because we're using our sponge brush, it left some tiny little dark places in all the crevices, which is fine because we're gonna make this look really weathered and aged. And let's let that 
sit there and dry for a little bit. All right, now we're going to come in with our burnt sienna, which is a, a brown, but it's a brown that kind of has a little bit of red in it. That's what the sienna does. Look at that. That's sweet. That is nice. Look at how it went from this color brown, and then we came in with our sienna, our burnt sienna. All right, now we're going to come in with our raw sienna. All right, just like that. See the kind of mustardy. We've got the medium brown, the burnt sienna, and then here is the raw sienna. Look at that. Look how nice that looks. Now just keep doing that. Just go around the whole thing and tap it and look at what that does. Man, is that nice. And that's it. Just keep going. All right, look at that. That is beautiful. Three tones are in there. That looks like legit leather right there. We've got our medium brown, which is right here. We've got our burnt sienna, which is right here. It's kind of red. And then we've got our raw sienna right here, which is like mustard. So we've got three tones in there, and that is really sweet. Nice. Look at that. And super easy, and it looks totally real. Great. All right, now we're going to come in with our black. And we're going to cut in right along our leather straps, just like that. We get into these little tight areas. All right, there we go. And now you can tell, look at the difference between the Plastidip black and the acrylic black. Look at the difference. Man, that is some rich black happening right there. Wow. Big difference between here and there. All right, there we go. Completely coated with black. That's All right, now we're going to come in with our real brown. Just like that. We've got some light spots in it where you can kind of see the tone change from black to brown. All right, check that out. Look at the edge of that, how it's got the light brown just around the edge. Just to lighten up the, the edge a little bit right there. All right, we're going to do that on all four edges. It's got the slight brown around every one of the wraps, like it's worn, and then right along these four kind of shoulders, it's a little bit lighter, so it looks like a hand has kind of worn it off a little bit. Nice. Same brown we just used on the handle, only we're going to come in and we're going to add some black to it. Now we're going to come in with our handle, right? We're going to use this really skinny brush and we're going to roll it through here. There we go. Look at that. Now you can just see the darker brown busting through the lighter brown. Right, just... All right, there we go. Look at that. That's really subtle. Really subtle. So right where you see the light parts of brown popping out, you can see some of those wood grain pieces just so that as you're turning it and some of the brown highlight is coming out in there, you pick up some grain marks. Okay, now we're going to come in with our wrought iron. That's a... All right, there we go. See that? We've got the gray areas in here popping out. There you go. Just enough. Okay, now with our medium gray along the edge like that.
All right, there we go. That is nice. Look at that. Three tones in there, black, wrought iron, and the medium gray. Go. All right, check that out, man. Look how easy that was. We came in, we sealed the whole thing with Plastidip, and then we came in and we did our leather, right? We used three tones of brown. We used the regular brown, we used the burnt sienna, and we used the raw sienna. So we got three tones in there to give it that nice leather look. And then we came in and we started, actually we came in after that, we brushed on all the black. We just cut it and painted it black. Then we came in and did just little, little hints of brown, little areas of brown around the handle. So you can't really tell if it's a black or a brown handle. It's kind of in between. And then the areas where brown is really popping out, we came in and with a little bit of a mixture of a really dark brown. And we came in here and we hit some some wood grain marks just in those brown highlights just to give it that look man that is nice and then we hit that same brown around the leather grip so it picked up on all the edges so it looks worn and then we also built the the brown up a little bit on the four shoulders of the handle just to make it look a little bit worn out and then we just came back in here with uh, two more tones to add to our black blade we added our wrought iron which was a dark gray then we came in with a medium gray and look at that it looks like a worn black steel blade that is really cool looking great all right so with that last easy detail putting the medium gray on the blade that brings our sucker punch blondie axe build to a close that was it easy there's the whole thing finished, sealed, and painted. Check that out. Um, super easy build. You saw how we shaped out the handle. We cut one side, then we rolled it over and cut the other side. Then we dremeled to shape it. Um, not bad. We could have taken a lot more time really finessing the handle, but it's up to you, that level of finesse you want. It, we left it a tiny bit rustic, and that's exactly how we wanted it. Um, you saw us cut the blade. Did what we do a lot of times, did the side cut, then stood it over and did the top cut to get the cool taper in the blade right there. And uh, the rest was so easy. This was just wrapping some thin straps. This was also just wrapping some thin straps to look like the faux leather. The real gem in this thing was the painting, which was super easy. You saw us come in and brush the three different tones on the leather around here. The, regular brown, the burnt sienna, and the raw sienna to get that nice leather tone in there. You see us do that all the time, use three tones. Uh, which we did up here at the front. We had the black, we had the wrought iron, which was a medium sort of a gray, actually a dark gray, and then the lighter gray um, to get that kind of oxidized and worn black steel look on the, on the head. And uh, then the handle, we came in and we just kind of did little ghosty areas of the brown just so that when you're turning it around you can't really tell is it black or is it brown and then came in and mixed a little bit of a darker brown than the brown we were using and just hit some thin little wood grain lines in there and uh, then just used our brown sponge brush and caught all these edges around the wraps and did the four shoulders just so that the grip looks kind of old and worn Man, this thing turned out sweet, and those colors are really, really subtle. When you're looking at it up close, you can see all that detail. Um, that's it, man. Super easy. Mm, that's it. That concludes making an EVA foam Sucker Punch Blondie Axe. Hope you liked it. If you did, give us a like, share us with a friend, and subscribe to this channel. And together, we're going to go step by step through a lot more super cool builds so that you get the props you deserve. Thanks for coming. See you next time.